And um, Professor, I see that uh, you have this uh, book um, in front of you. <laughs> so the first question I'm going to ask is, has China won? <laughs> Over to you. Um, first of all, let me thank Sam Sagra for uh, inviting me to this session. And to say, Stefan, I'm not sure whether you can see me. <laughs> I can see you. <laughs> uh, I, I'm looking forward very much uh, to this dialogue with you. And I want to begin, in a sense, by you, you, you tried to explain your uh, perspective of the world and how you try to approach this in a detached, objective fashion to try and understand Xi Jinping, to try and understand China. And I would say, in that sense, we are similar. Uh, I, like you, I don't speak Chinese. <laughs> and uh, I'm also trying to understand uh, China in a detached, objective fashion. And as you said, you're a child of the Enlightenment. I'm a child of the Enlightenment, too. So to apply those values in terms of objectively trying to understand uh, China. And the reason why I wrote this book uh, has China won for, is for a very simple reason, uh, which is that the West is completely misunderstanding China, <laughs> to put it very simply and bluntly. And only because the West has got used to 200 years of domination of world history and the West assumes that, that 19th century and 20th century are the normal condition of the world. And what for, before that 1800 years was abnormal. <laughs> I see it the other way. I see the previous 800, 1800 years as the normal condition of the world, where China and India were the number one, number two economies in the world. The last 200 years have been an aberration. All aberrations come to a natural end. So you're seeing the perfectly the natural return of China and India, and the rest of Asia, by the way. And the problem that the West has is that it has a very fixed set of lenses or glasses that it uses to try, to try to understand China. And of course, the Chinese reality will never, ever become like Western reality. And by the way, you know, the West always looks very big. China is just one country. You add up the total population of the West, North America and Europe, you may get maybe 700, 800 million people. China is 1.4 billion people. And so the failure to understand that China must be understood on its own terms is a fundamental mistake. And also it leads to other fundamental misunderstanding. Now, I can mention four or five, but let me just mention one as an example. The assumption of the West was that if China succeeded, it could only succeed by becoming a replica of a Western society. I'm not making this up, okay? If you want proof, as you know, one of the most powerful policy makers in the Biden administration today is Kurt Campbell. Go read his essay in Foreign Affairs. And in, as Kurt Campbell says in his magazine, The Essay in Foreign Affairs, hey, all of us Americans thought, very simply, we'll open up China economically. After we open up China economically, China will open up politically. China will become a liberal democracy. And China and America will live happily ever after. That's a fairy tale. But it's a fairy tale that was believed by serious people. And I can tell you, when future historians look back at this Western assumption that China would become like the West, they'd be very puzzled how a young country like the United States, with less than one quarter the population of China, only 250 years old, this young republic thought it could transform a 4,000-year civilization with four times the population. That was an absurd assumption, but everybody believed it. And what is even more shocking is just the simple failure to understand that ha after having the oldest continuous civilization in the world, the Chinese have worked out their own political history, their own political traditions, their own political culture, 
and they know what works for China and what doesn't work for China. And a divided two-party system in their view, I'm not saying it's my view, doesn't work for China. And in the case of China, the history of time, China teaches them that when you have strong leadership on top, the people benefit, the bottom 50% benefit. And when you have weak, the divided leadership on top, the people suffer. Which is why, incidentally, there's a lot of support for strong leadership in China. And if you want proof, Harvard Kennedy School has come up with a study that shows support for the Chinese Communist Party has gone up from 86% in 2003 to 93% uh, in 2016. Why? The Chinese have had the best 40 years of socio-economic development in 4,000 years of Chinese history. At a time when the Chinese people feel strong and self-confident, the West is asking, why don't you change and become like us? It's a question that seems perfectly natural to the Western mind, it seems absurd to the Chinese. So these are the sort of fundamental misunderstandings which I tried to change uh, in my writings. So that, that the goal at the end of the day is to promote better understanding. And I hope with this dialogue with you, Stefan, we will end up with achieving a better understanding.